Moving on to our next speaker. Um, I'd like to introduce Shalu Kanan from India. Um, and she'll be telling us more about significant conservation in India, looking beyond the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. I hope she's online <laughs> whenever you're ready. Hi everyone. My name is Shalu. I'm from India. Right now doing my PhD at Kerala University of Fisheries and Ocean Studies. And I'm pretty excited to be part of this meeting. A bit worried that I can't meet you in person. I hope I can meet you all in the next symbio. So today I'm going to present on significant conservation in India. So let me share my screen. Signatic Conservation in India, Looking Beyond Wildlife Protection Act, 1972. In India, signatics are protected and conserved by Wildlife Protection Act of India. It protects the threatened species of flora and fauna and their habitat, the species listed in WLPA, that is Wildlife Protection Act of India, are categorized into Schedule 1 to 4. And the Schedule 1 receives the highest level of legal protection. It also prohibits hunting and trade, protect habitat, and penalize offenders. It's an effective legal measure for decades in conserving species, especially larger mammals. So what about synapses? Signatide are also under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act in 2001, having the highest legal protection by law, which includes sea horse and pipefish. Till after 20 years of protection, the cladistine trade continues without an and these represent only 1% of the actual signatures that are entered into illegal trade in India. Moreover, 70% of the seahorse species that are recorded from India are under vulnerable category of IUCN Red List. In the case of pipefish, most are data denizen and these concerns. Moving on to my objectives, to assess fishers' awareness and conservation attitude towards synapses in India, and also determine the current exploitation rate and fishing mortality of two threatened seahorse in southeast coast of India. We did a questionnaire survey to assess general awareness on seahorse and pipefish, their legal status, and conservation attitudes of fishers. So it represents around 314 respondents uh, from which fishing village or landing centers consist of six coastal states and two islands with an equal representation of east and west coast. As part of the questionnaire survey, we did a photo identification of set methods by fishers to know fishers can identify the species for accurate data. And from the result, it shows that approximately 35% of our fishers can't identify by fish and they are confused uh, at the distal area OE. So then to the question, fishers awareness about signatures as protected species, most fishers were not aware of the legal status of signatures. So when comparing seahorse and pipefish, fishers were more aware about seahorse and pipefish. And also, East Coast fishers 
were more aware of the legal status in the, in the case of both seahorse and pipefish um, than the West Coast. And the difference might be due to the fact that some of the surveyed area covered in East Coast comes under marine protected area where law enforcement and its interventions are comparatively better. And also 70% of fishers respondent to be unaware of the legal status of pipe fish. And less than 10% of the fishers responded about the penalization of penalties about the associated crimes or legal case observed in their targets. Then Fisher's attitude towards conservation of signals. More than 50% of the Fisher's shows a positive attitude towards seahorse conservation and around 38% in the case of pipefish. So I'm moving on to the next objective that is population dynamics of two threatened seahorse and the study area uh, is from Park Bay. It's a trade hub for seahorse from southeast coast of India. And the length weight data were collected from trawl by catch of two species, Ocampus coda and Trinagulatus. Both are commonly seen in southeast coast of India. And here, uh, discuss only about the fishing mortality and exploitation rate of our study. So, an assessment of the mortality rate indicates a high vulnerability of the local population of seahorse due to fishing pressure. And the result shows that hippocampus cuda have the higher fishing mortality rate than trimaculatus. And the length of first capture of hippocampus cuda and trimaculatus were 12 and 10 centimeters, which indicate they were caught at their first maturity. And the photo represents the trawl by catch. So in Southeast coast of India, this trawl by catch become a commercialized business for poultry feed and oil production which includes protected and endangered species without any conservation. Then to the important result of our study, that is exploitation rate of seahorse from Bay. So the exploitation rate was analyzed using biomass per recruit analysis. And the figure A represents hippocampus cuda and we represent hippocampus trilaculatus. The white circle represents the current exploitation rate, and the black circle represents the exploitation rate at E50, which means exploitation level, which will result in a reduction of the unexploited biomass by 50%. From the result, we can see that the current exploitation of hippocampus cuda is very closer to E50 than trimaculatus. Might be due to the fact that hippocampus cuda is a shallow water species, and most fishers uh, in Park Bay operating their vessels in less than 10 kilometers. So a slight change in the exploitation rate, the current exploitation rate, uh, by decreasing the mesh size, which eventually reduces in the size of mass capture and leads to over-exploitation and population collapse of hippocampus cura. And these suggesting that seahorse are extremely vulnerable to over-exploitation, even as pike catch. So I'd like to conclude today's presentation that there is a lack of awareness on WLPA and protected species among fishers, especially in the case of signals. And it also shows the ineffectiveness of WLPA 
uh, that uh, so there is a continuous trade in spite of fishing regulations and legal standards. And also, the demography studies suggest even as incidental catch, seahorses are vulnerable to overfishing. The exploitation rate of hippocampus cuda is closer to A50. So if it continues, we don't know how the population will sustain. So an urgent need for better management practice, like bottom-up community-based management plans, fishery regulation, regulation to slash the monetary benefit go by as the market, protection of critical habitat like sea glass meadows and top-down steering and guidance for better law enforcement. So these are photos taken when we did an awareness program two years back from Tamil Nadu. Thank you for listening. Hi, uh, so if my voice break in between, I apologize because I have a bit of uh, fever. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer. And uh, and you can add something more about what I said. So, thank you. Wonderful. Um, we have some time for questions. Um, if there are any questions. Anyone in person for a question? I have a question here. Hello. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. So, Shalu, I have a question about uh, why. So, why uh, you find like the Kuda has like higher fish mortality than the uh, Chimacalitis? What is the reason? Uh, do you have any like idea to explain this phenomenon? Because, based on to my knowledge, in China, actually, Chimacalitis has higher fish mortality, much higher than Kuda. Because most of the fishing activities are, you know, in pretty much in a bit of like uh, deeper waters, like more than 30 meters, most of the trolling activities are happening. Um, and those waters are most of the, the, you can find high chance to find traumatic natives. That's why the reason why uh, traumatic natives in China has a higher fish mortality than Kuda. So, what's the reason uh, that you find different? Results in, in in India is because the fishing activities also have a relationship with the uh, distribution in the of in India. Thank you for your question. Um, so we did a survey in Park Bay. Uh, so most fishers operating their vessels in less than ten kilometers, and their vessels are mini trawlers, uh, not that. Uh, larger one. So they're mostly um, fishing over less than 10 kilometers where for canvas scooter are very common because it's a shallow water species. That might be a reason uh, for the exploit variation in the exploitation trade. But um, in the, if, if the range of uh, fishing increase, uh, even in the, tri the rate of exploitation for trimaculators also increase. So I think that's it. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Um, I have one quick question in terms of um, regulations, like local regulations that you've implemented. I know you mentioned various um, different initiatives that could be taken to raise the awareness. Um, within India or your area, is there a focus on regulatory protection for seagrass habitats and the shallow kind of coastal habitats that are protected by law? Um, or is that something that would need to be developed and promoted still? Or are they protected by law? Actually, in India, um, there is no uh, specific regulation for seagrass um, protection. But uh, sea grass meadows are protected by marine protected area. There are certain areas which are located as marine protected. So it helps, um, especially in uh, there is no fishing over there. 
Uh, but uh, there is no specific regulations about conserving the sea sea grass. Right. So I think. Do you think that would be, be a thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think if there are no other questions, we'll we'll move on to the next speaker, and I'll give it to Sean um, to moderate going forward.